Thank you for joining us. Uh, Nick, appreciate your time, uh, taking your time out of your schedule sure. to talk with us. And um, so the energy industry is facing unprecedented change right now. We're uh, having to deal with uh, integrating new renewables onto the line. Uh, we're looking at building up new clean coal and nuclear facilities. Um, at the same time, we're dealing with a need for uh, new transmission. So given all that, what do you see as the major challenges in your opinion, and what are the threats and opportunities facing the industry from these game-changing developments? So it's a great time, number one, Christopher, is what you should understand. I mean, it sounds a little overwhelming, but times of great change you know, lead to great things. Uh, it becomes like a hotbed, if you will, for innovation. It becomes a hotbed for entrepreneurialism and intrapreneurialism. So it's a great time from my humble perspective. Now, I'm not in the industry. People in the industry do have to cope with all of this change. But it's better to change before you need to change than when somebody makes you change or something makes you change. And it's got all kinds of wonderful opportunities in it. So whether you're dealing with the, with the, uh, the energy sources, or the distribution of the energy, or the efficiency and effectiveness, or the awareness to the consumer. All of this needs to come together in a systems level thought. That's the opportunity. The threat is that we don't do it fast enough, that we don't do it quick enough. Because there are places that don't have what we have that are building correct by construction. And in the end, you know, we can't have a thriving economy without you know, uh, an incredibly thoughtful, creative, innovative, uh, entire energy system. We need it for our economy, we need it for our ecology, environment, and we need it for our security. Mm -hmm. What can uh, Congress, the Obama administration, and federal regulators do to help the industry tackle the enormous tasks that lie ahead? So the first thing they need to do, Christopher, is they need to listen better. They need to make sure they understand the problem before they start coming up with the answer. Um, we need a better, it's clear to me, we need a better relationship between industry and its regulators. There, there has to be uh, a more thoughtful intersection. Uh, that, that's not just at the federal level, that's at the local level. Because as you know, energy uh, has local regulations, state regulations, as well as federal regulations that it needs to, to deal with uh, in this country. So uh, I think that there's much that can be done. Um, if they could adopt the attitude of being an enabler, um, they'd be so much better off. You know, you need what? The problem is what? Let me do some research in this area to help you be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, these, these rules are really not getting the desired effect. Could we change those rules, regulations, in order to give you the desired effect that you need? You have to remember, in this, in this industry, the industry is the dominant factor here, not the government. I mean, the industry spends huge amounts of money, orders of magnitude more money on what they do than what the federal government spends you know, in trying to aid, abet, or help. Uh, the industry. So the, the, I think the government, if it just took a step back at all levels and kind of made sure that it was engaged correctly with whatever, the transmitters, uh, you know, the, the sources of energy, the providers of energy, uh, the, the people who are going to make the grid smart uh, or distribute it in different ways, and the consumers, I think they'd be all so much better off. Mm -hmm. Building off of that, you know, the government has spend, spent tens of billions of dollars on energy infrastructure, smart grid, uh, energy efficiency and R&D is part of uh, their economic stimulus efforts. Have those investments made a uh, significant difference in your opinion? I think those investments are starting to make uh, a significant difference. I'm a big supporter of what RPE has done. Uh, I believe in the innovation hub that the Department of Energy started. Uh, but you know, mostly I believe in the people. I believe in the national labs. These are wonderful people. Uh, they are gifted, talented, some of the best, best and brightest people anywhere in the world work in our national labs. So uh, I'm all for continuing to make these investments. There are long-term issues. There are you know, long-term research uh, items that need to be dealt with that, that they're better suited to deal with. But I do want to see them all come closer to industry. I want to see them not just coming up with the answer for the answer's sake, I want them asking, and the problem is what first, and then engaging. Mm -hmm. Great. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. It's my Nick. pleasure, really Christopher. Appreciate it. Good to see you. All the best to you.